This video was sponsored by Skillshare. I have a link for you to try them out for free at the end of the video, so be sure to stick around. Hey, welcome to the first Friday checkout of the year. If you thought this year is somehow going to be less crazy than 2020 was, then maybe start thinking again. But anyway, we've got some tech news, specifically Qualcomm announcing a new chip. It's going to be really important. Trump banning eight new Chinese apps. And we'll also talk about Windows getting a major overhaul. As always, we also have a brand new tech knowledge quiz, but this time we made it into a lightning round quiz, meaning that the questions are easier, but you only have 90 seconds for 20 questions. So be fast, and as always, if you get 15 right, you'll get an invite to crowd. Links are in the description, and welcome to the Friday checkout. Okay, my pick of the week will be the Snapdragon 480. And I don't usually talk about kind of entry level mobile chips on this channel, but this one seems to be a real game changer with five major upgrades. First, the chip supports 120 Hz refresh rates on full HD plus screens. Second, it supports Qualcomm Quick Charge 4 Plus. Third, it uses the same Adreno 619 GPU as the premium Snapdragon 750 does, for example, and doubles the CPU power of its predecessor, the 460. Fourth, it comes with a triple image signal processor, just like Qualcomm introduced with their high-end 888 not long ago, so it can take three videos and photos at the same time. And finally, Finally, it will even have full 5G support, including sub-6 and millimeter wave frequencies. In other words, this chip sounds like a massive upgrade and completely out of line with what we've seen in the lower end 400 series before. And yet, the phones it will launch with will reportedly cost $125 to $250. And that's pretty insane. I mean, typically the sort of $300 to $500 range was where we started seeing decent phones. I mean, phones like the Pixel 4a or the OnePlus Nord, and then basically everything above that was great. And that three to $500 range is basically being cut in half. And we might start seeing really good phones coming at around $200. Phones with high refresh rate screens, fast processors, decent cameras, fast charging, and even 5G. HMD Global with its Nokia phones, as well as Oppo and Vivo, have already promised to launch phones with this chip in early 2021. And I don't typically like to make cross-platform comparisons because they're kind of meaningless, but if we get 120 Hz full HD plus screens on budget Android phones before $1,000 iPhones get them, that will be, well, interesting to say the least. Okay, and my fail of the week will be Trump earlier this week using an executive order to block US companies from doing business with eight new Chinese apps, including Alipay, QQ Wallet, and WeChat Pay, three different mobile wallets from China, QQ, an ancient instant messaging app that even people in China barely use anymore, WPS Office, which is sort of a Microsoft Office competitor on phones that comes pre-installed on many Chinese devices, Cam Scanner, which allows users to digitally scan documents using their phones camera, VMate, which as far as I can tell is basically a TikTok clone, and ShareIt, a file sharing app. Remarkably, nowhere in the executive order does Trump actually claim that these apps were specifically ever involved in criminal or inappropriate activities. Instead, the order just says China in general is doing nasty things, like collecting the user data of American citizens, and then it fails to explain why Trump picked these eight apps out of the thousands that are active in the US. And in case your internal memory buffer is being overloaded with all the insane news that is coming out of this presidency, just a quick reminder that Trump actually banned TikTok three and a half months ago, like the real TikTok, not the beta VMate one, as well as WeChat, the chat app that has largely replaced the QQ app that Trump has just banned like 10 years ago, but then never really followed through on either of those bans. When the deadlines came, he also announced a hard ban on ZTE earlier on, which he then later quietly partially lifted at the dismay of his own senators. And he has been changing his mind like once a month on his Huawei ban since it has been announced too. So it seems like Trump likes to loudly announce these bans and drums his chest every time he does something like this as the protector against China or whatever he thinks he is, but then can't really be bothered with like consistently enforcing any of it. And I think this ban won't be any different from that. 
For a start, this ban will take effect in 45 days, by when Trump won't actually be president anymore. And since this is an executive order, the next president can kind of just revoke it before it ever takes effect. Which Biden hopefully will do, as the order makes absolutely no sense. If the worry is that user data of US citizens is being exported to China in general and is being processed there, then the solution to that is not cherry-picking eight random companies and banning those, it is establishing a new law by which user data of US citizens has to be processed in the US, at least for Chinese companies. Many countries do similar things, including China, which requires foreign companies like Apple, for example, to store Chinese user data exclusively in China. And if the next US president has a sensible foreign policy approach that isn't purely based on trying to make tough guy headlines with individual bans, I hope the US will follow a path like that instead. Okay, and my word of the week will be our first sort of official confirmation of Microsoft's upcoming Sun Valley project. Windows Central first reported on Sun Valley in October and called it a big UI overhaul for the file explorer, the start menu and tablet mode among other things back then. And while we have seen some small improvements, for example around the slightly more polished looking start menu since, apparently a lot more is coming. This week Microsoft described in a job posting an attempt to quote, deliver a sweeping visual rejuvenation of Windows experiences to signal to our customers that Windows is back capital B-A-C-K, and ensure that Windows is considered the best user OS experience for customers. I can just see Panos Panay, the head of Windows and Surface, typing that out himself. He's always really pumped and loves caps lock and all this kind of stuff, so it definitely sounds like him. But anyway, the Windows team is apparently gearing up for a proper visual overhaul, finally. As a reminder, Windows is still full of UI elements that go all the way back to, uh, I don't know, like XP or something maybe even older than that. It has at least four different types of context menus. The company hasn't been able to settle even on a consistent background color for apps and like a million other things. I've made a full video about all of these inconsistencies like two years ago and it's sadly still fully relevant, but I hope that many of the issues will get fixed with Panos in charge, with macOS turning up the heat of the competition using their new M1 processors, and with the pandemic apparently giving Windows a huge boost of users as well as making it more important within Microsoft again. And as I said in that old video of mine, creating a consistent design system that lasts for decades for an old legacy system like Windows with over a billion users spread across hundreds of form factors is of course a particularly complex task. But if you are interested in how the real pros think about it, there's a Skillshare class for pretty much exactly that. This fantastic course explains what's called the Atomic Design Methodology, a design system that explains how you effectively break down a digital product into its components, or atoms, and how you build it back up into bigger blocks that you could call molecules, organisms, and finally pages. It's a really good guide to thinking about design from a big picture perspective, and Skillshare also has plenty of other classes that zoom all the way in and teach you about the very hands-on and practical skills as well, including how to use any of the popular design tools like Adobe XD, which is what I used for Crowd or Figma, Sketch, or whatever you prefer. The Skillshare platform is designed for learning with classes that are structured neatly into playlists, an option to chat with the instructor, a way for you to upload class projects, and the platform has thousands of courses on anything from design, photography, video editing, music creation, marketing, or whatever skill you want to pick up next. The first 1000 people to use my link in the description will get a free trial to Skillshare Premium, and if you decide to keep that subscription, it's less than $10 a month. So check it out, happy learning, and I'll see you next Friday.